lot of cases, if it's in the warehouse and it's 50 degrees or it's 60 degrees in the warehouse, then you get it out to the job and there's no, you, you're talking about not having electric on the job. So I'm assuming that you're putting it in without heat in a lot of cases. And like I say, they start now, like a couple of weeks, right? They start to put the propane, yeah. the yeah. propane it, here. It seems like up here it's a struggle to get them to uh, put the heat or the AC on ahead of time. Yeah. In Florida, it was something we really pushed for and we got it because we wouldn't install them. Right. Here, the builders really don't want to put the AC on before we get there. Yeah. So. Yeah, even if, if, you, if you, we are the hardware people, we right. understand about the, the, the product, but they like, I don't know if they don't I care don't or, or, or if, it, if they just, I will win or well, it's funny. I, 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 I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, everything comes down to money. They don't want to. Someone's got to pay for it. Yeah, I, I feel like they don't care about us because, like, no, just install that shit. Well, I don't care if you need to come back and do repair. I, I feel like that sometimes. Well, I, don't, I know with uh, Meritage, I've uh, been doing a lot of their work covering them, and they don't have enough heaters all the time to go around to the subdivisions to every single house that they're putting out. Right. And that's half the problem. And it, we pull off on it if it gets real Tem cold. Tempor temporary heat you're talking about. Right? Yeah, 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 the propane out there and all that. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes those, those propane heaters are, are, in some cases, are de detrimental because they pump so much moisture, temporary moisture, into the house. Um, the way they burn, they, they, they'll raise the humidity in the house up to, you know, I didn't realize that. I thought the heat would normally, well, naturally dry it, huh? No, the, the, those type of heaters put a lot of, uh, put a lot of humidity um, into the house. Um, so while they warm it up and make it feel comfortable, a lot of times they're loading the house with moisture too, you know. And, and then the biggest thing is when the HVAC does come on and that house starts to um, acclimate, starts to contract a little bit, that's when you end up with your door, to, with, mm -hmm. you get a buckle here or you, mm -hmm. get, you get separation. So it's important from your guys' standpoint, um, look, it's real world, I, you know, if you're not always going to have the heat on. You're going to have to put the job in, or they're going to get someone else to do it. And you don't want to be home watching, you know, Looney Tunes all day. You need to work. So it's important for you to do everything you can do on your end to try to minimize having to come back. And it sounds like you guys are doing that by grinding high spots, um, filling low spots. The flatter that floor is, the better chance you're going to have for success. And you also mentioned that they're using full quarter round. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They were the four four yeah. So, my recommendation to you and to your guys would be give yourself give yourself a half inch of we expand, about three three quarter expansion gap. Three quarter we leave in the wall. So do you have base? They have baseboard up. Sometimes we we'll, we'll, I mean three quarter we if you don't have the baseboard like okay. yesterday. So yeah. We know it's going to be almost an inch and an inch and a quarter. Right. They're all wood door jams, wood. Yeah, the, the, so you're the under, gyms, you're, you're under cutting right. all those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be, I mean, highly recommend that you make sure you fully undercut the door jams. You don't have a little piece under there that's gonna hold it up. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they're cleaned out all the way. Yeah. And make sure you got that expansion because the expansion gap is, this, this, is a, this is a really stable product. It's more about the expansion and contraction of the house. Mm -hmm. So, Make sure you guys are leaving that gap because that will minimize that will minimize some of the callbacks too. I mean, it's a floating product, so it's got to be able to move. Yeah, about the gap we had a lot of problems before, but we, we figured this is out there. You got, got it. Yeah, you guys have done a bunch of it. I think Adam was telling me you guys. Have, have yeah, it's pretty much me doing there, right? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, so like nine nine percent. You got to split up. He does the north. He does the south. Yeah. Okay. And we're doing the majority of our laminate in the south. Yeah. All right. You mentioned Meritage Blank. Are y'all putting uh, any uh, mow off or shawl in there, the laminate wise? A little bit, not too much. Is this, so primarily the main to this is the main laminate part you guys doing up here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and you and I talked a little bit about it, is um, if you're doing if you're doing the whole downstairs, you're doing the majority of the house with this product. Is um, your layout? Which way you're going to run the the, the laminate is that predetermined when you guys get there they want it running this yeah, way or they want it running this way? Yeah, <laughs> okay so once you know what direction it's going to run 
you want to you want to mentally think about what's the best what's the best place for me to start. Um, yeah. You know, and you can relate this to your crew to minimize having to backlay mm -hmm. going backwards. Like yeah. if we were going to do this area here, this room, that room, the room around the corner, I would start on this wall. Yep. Uh huh. We always do. Right. Uh -huh. Otherwise, if, if you if you started on an outside wall. Which in a lot of cases, when you're talking about flooring, that's what they you pick an outside wall because they're typically straighter and truer. But if you started here and you worked all your laminate, I you came through here. Now you got now you got to backlay uh -huh. the majority of that room. When you come down here, you have to backlay all that. Yep. So sometimes just a little bit of forethought to minimize that because the product will install. It will install putting the groove into the tongue this way, mm -hmm. all right, but it's, it's going to increase the, the, the degree of difficulty. It's going to be harder to put it in that way. Yeah. Um, so I missed that five. Which is the best way to get Best way is direction. to put, best way is to put the tongue into the groove, okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, and, and sometimes that's a challenge because I, I'm talking to some guys on the phone, you know, a lot of times they think this part that sticks out further, right. they assume that's the tongue. And that's not actually the part that sticks out further is the groove. So sometimes after talking to the guy for a while, I realized that he's putting, he's installing the groove into the tongue. What we want is we want this little skinny part, mm -hmm. we want to install the tongue into the groove this way. And the sinky tongue, tongue, I want to Tongue into the groove. It's a lot easier. Okay, mm -hmm. and from that standpoint, we want to do the same thing. We want to do the same thing here. We want the groove exposed. So if I'm on the product, okay, I'm working from right to left, but I'm always putting, I'm always putting the tongue into the groove, I see the and then the tongue into the groove. So our installation method. Is, um, is what we call angle-angle installation mm -hmm. method. So all, all that simply means is angle-angle <clears throat> is two angles. So the first angle is here. Mm -hmm. And make sure that that, make sure that that head seam is, is tight and it's all the way together. So that's the first angle. This is gonna sit on there. And then the second angle is right here. Now, you should be able to put this in without lifting it really any higher than my fingers. Yeah, because well, if you lift it more, you remove the next one. Yeah, Vinny knows. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny can do this. So, and that's where some guys- My make, guys teach me. Yeah, they know, they know. Yeah, I mean, if, if I lift it, if I lift it up any higher, mm -hmm. all that's gonna come out. So once I get my fingers on it, right there is where I'm gonna put it in. Yep. Now, this is, uh, this is what, seven, seven and a half inch product. All your difficulty, all your friction, all your resistance when you're putting that in is right here on this head seam or that mm -hmm. short seam. So the wider the plank, the hard, the more friction you have, the harder it's gonna to be to slide in. So when I'm talking to guys or we're doing these clinics, I try to get them when they're putting this in to focus everything right here on this head seam. Because if they grab a plank, like this and they go to put it in a lot of times this side's going to drop right in there's there's nothing there's no resistance to hold this from coming in and mm -hmm. this isn't in yet so obviously once you get it crooked once you get it cockeyed now you're really going to fight it so focus focus all your efforts right here and then we're working this way anyway we can come down and click that in <clears throat> If your guys are using these, that's great. I don't like to see the mallets. I see some guys with the mallets and they're trying to drive it down with the mallets or, or they're, they're smacking it in with their hands. And you're gonna, you're gonna be, you know, 45 years old like me and, and mm -hmm. your hands are gonna be shot all through it. So just use this. And to me, all that is is some really cheap insurance to make sure that that tongue is fully seated in that groove. Mm -hmm. This product and even some other ones we have because they have a really dark bevel or some of our darker products, 
<clears throat> it can be really hard to see a it can have see a, a, a little gap. Mm -hmm. So we get Ron was talking uh, to Ron about this the other day, and uh, a lot of times guys will call back and say, uh, you know, my it's coming apart. When this product is fully locked and engaged, it doesn't come apart. The reason it came apart is because it was never fully engaged to begin with. Mm -hmm. and we saw some of that on the job that we, that we were on the other day where it wasn't, the head seam wasn't completely in. And I think it wasn't completely in because they were installing, <clears throat> they were installing like this. Hey, he's here. Okay. And they would mm -hmm. hammer and they were driving driving that in. Then he could screw up the edges too. Yeah. Some yeah. Trips. yeah. And, and guys are getting away with it and guys are doing it because the product the product will allow you to do it. The problem is you're more than likely fracturing fracturing this groove by driving that tongue into That's it. That's what's happening, yeah. All right, because it's not designed to go together that way. So you're, you're this, this, this tongue is coming into the groove and what it's doing is it's, so what's gonna happen eventually is, again, the heat comes on, the house starts expanding and contracting. There's a high spot in the floor. You start getting forces working on that because that's fractured, that's where it separates. Now they're calling back and say, all my head seams, and, th and that's what we'll hear. All my head seams are all coming apart. Okay, I need to translate it to my guy right now. Got it. Mira, esse que ele falou aqui ahorita é algo que a coisa da casa que ele 